So the big question, we're two months in, is it worth it? Hi, we're Dan and Michelle with Honeymoon Always. Welcome to our channel. Today we wanna to talk about the truth about moving abroad. Uh, what that means for us is we just moved to Lisbon, Portugal from Austin, Texas, and we've been getting a lot of questions about why we chose to come here, what our lives looked like before, and you know what we think now that we've been here for a couple of months. And so we wanna talk about that. We're gonna talk about what prepped us for coming and, and how we as, I guess you'd call us digital nomads, how we as content creators have afforded to get here and how we got here and our thoughts and feelings about being here, what that culture shock looks like, the good and the bad. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. We are looking to get 5,000 subscribers next. That's our next big goal. So please help us get there and follow along with us on Instagram at Honeymoon Always. So when people find out that we have moved to Portugal, um, that we sold our house and all of our things and moved here sight unseen, they say, wow, that's really brave. That's really bold. And well, it might be those things. I, I don't think that's necessarily incorrect. That's, I guess we don't really see it that way. And I want to talk about why we don't see it that way and why this just felt really smart and good for us to do. So let's talk a little bit about how we got here. Yeah, so I started our travel website, Honeymoon Always, uh, in 2015. So I've been working in SEO for over 10 years, and I've always helped other companies grow using SEO on their websites. But along the way, I always tried to start something on my own. And the thing that finally clicked was this travel website, Honeymoon Always. I started it and it was just a side hustle that sometimes I'd go weeks without touching, but eventually it grew into something more and it started to produce income. Eventually I lost my job when the company I wor was working for was sold. Um, and at that time I was making enough to feel comfortable to give it a go. So we made a plan and it set some goals to see if I could work full time on the travel website instead of looking for a new job. At the time, I was working as a digital product manager for a large organic grocery store run by Amazon. Based in Austin. <laughs> so you could guess where that was. Uh, so I was working on the website there, uh, focused on a lot of you know digital interactions and data and strategy for making sure that people get where they wanna go on the website. And as much as I love doing that, I found myself really unhappy in the corporate environment. And I, I constantly found myself putting all of my energy, everything I had, all my creativity, and basically my self-worth in this job. And not just this job, but every job I'd had before that, I was constantly trying to make it give back to me what I was giving to it. And as hard as I pushed, it just wasn't happening. And I was I was pretty unhappy there, but I loved the idea of Dan being able to go off on his own with his website. I would be the stability with his steady income and the health insurance, and he could see if this website would work for him. And best case scenario, there would be a point when I could leave my job and join with him. Yeah, but then COVID happened. And so we were at home a lot together, spending a lot of time together. She was working from home and it did a couple things. Um, one, Michelle realized some of the differences that working from home, uh, how it made things better. So without a commute, um, we got to spend more time together and like getting away from like that corporate environment, like being at work, you know, working from home, a lot of that went away. And so she could notice that. So I started looking into separately. I wasn't looking for a place to move to, but I started looking into things to do like bucket list items. And I've always wanted to do like a surf camp. And so I found Portugal to be a great place to have an affordable surf camp. And then started looking at the nearby cities where we would also want to visit if we came to Portugal. And that's when I started learning that Portugal was a great place to live, that it was easy to get a visa. It just looked like a lot of great reasons to move to Portugal. And we have a video on that. So um, you can check that out for all the reasons that we moved to Portugal. So the next thing that he needed to do was to convince me to move to a new country. Yeah, and I wasn't like, I was like, this isn't gonna work, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> and I've, I've thought about other countries, but I knew they wouldn't work because Michelle has a rule that there needs to be a Nordstrom wherever she lives. And 
I could never find a place that like would work for that. But what, having a Nordstrom in a city means that it's a you know established city that has different resources that make it to where we'd want to live there. And Portugal didn't meet that criteria. So I was like, I don't know, let's see. And I just, one day I think Michelle was having like an off day at work or something. And I said, well, you know, you could quit your job and we could just move to Portugal and just kind of putting a field around out there. And her response was, but they don't have a Nordstrom there. And I quickly responded that there might not be a Nordstrom in Lisbon, but we could always just take like a weekend trip to Paris and you can go shopping there. Um, and she <laughs> literally like lit up, like she had a big old smile. I could see in her eyes, like this was like a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't an automatic thing, but over the next several months, we would talk about Portugal. I'd be like, oh, look at this cool place in Portugal. Or like, oh, the healthcare system in Portugal is ranked 13th, or it's the third safest. You know, I just kind of would share these things until it became kind of real. We were like, no, this is a good idea. We should probably do that. And he also included some other things that were things that I've always wanted, but I we didn't feel comfortable spending money on. So like a regular housekeeper. We were looking at the cost to have a housekeeper in Portugal, and it's so much more affordable. And like, should we choose to have children? Child care is a lot more affordable. And as he mentioned, health care. So there were these, these kind of carrots dangling in front of me of like, we could have the life that we wanted without feeling like we were irresponsibly spending our money. Yeah. Or like, here's a beach in Portugal. Yeah. Like, check it out. <laughs> we were living in Austin in the time, so there's no beach near there worth visiting. Oof, if um, you've been to Galveston, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So after he started warming me up to the idea, we kind of thought, let's plan for this at the end of 2021. Let's get serious about this then. But then things at my job shifted. They had a huge reorg and our whole department was laid off. And we had about two months to kind of help wrap things up while we were working. So I had two months to be interviewing for other jobs and be, still be working at our my current job. And I had insurance for three months. And as I was interviewing for other companies, Dan said, well, you know, is this something you would want to do more than you would want to move to Portugal and quit your job? And like, no, of course not. And that's what started our big transition to move to Portugal is we decided that day we were going to do it and we moved forward. We put our house on the market. And this is probably the only thing I think was kind of crazy is we put our house on the market before we got our visas. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, we're going to do this. Um, and it was just kind of every now and then you'd take a pause and kind of get really anxious and be like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And then you remind yourself of why you're doing it. And so that's something I would say for anyone thinking about moving abroad. I know for some people, like if you're single and like 23 years old and don't have any, like anything really to leave behind, like this is gonna be super easy for you. But if you're like us, where you had a house, you had um, jobs, things, and you stability. Had jobs, stability, all these things, it's gonna be a bit harder for you or even kids. I know some people are considering to do this with kids. You really need a vision of what and what a real strong reason why you're doing this that can calm you down mm -hmm. during any moment of anxiety because they're going to happen a lot of people don't talk about that but uh, all along the way we would have just like nighttime brain we call it where like when you wake up early in the morning or right before you go to bed and just things start spiraling and you're like oh, what am i doing nighttime brain hit me really hard on the airplane over you know obviously there's no return at that point <laughs> but i was on the plane like crying being like what have we done? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. And it was, it's just nighttime brain because when you look at the vision of what we're doing, I still, I still believe strongly in it. And I believe strongly in it the day we made the decision. So that hasn't changed and it really helps yeah. <laughs> calm things down when you get that nighttime brain. Yeah. And I see it in, in the Facebook groups is every now and then someone will post saying everyone's so excited and everyone just shares all these fun milestones, but I'm freaking out over here and I have our plane ticket in a week from now. People will say that. And it, it I think, most people feel that and along the way you're going to have anxiety and it's going to be a scary thing that you're doing but if you just have a vision of what is to come that can drive that anxiety away and help you remember what what are you doing i think a lot of people rightly think that because we sold our house we have no backup plan which in a sense is true but the way we looked at it was worst case scenario we come over here for some reason we hate portugal which We'd never been, so it was a possibility, but we also didn't, we did enough research that we didn't think it was possible. But worst case scenario is we're here, we do a lot of travel, we really beef up the website for a couple of years, we have the time of our lives and we move back to the United States. So to us, 
knowing that we are still very employable and this is really good experience and I'm learning new things that I can add to my resume, it doesn't feel like we're stuck or that we made an irreversible decision. This is just an adventure that we're taking for now. And that also brought me a sense of, of peace. I don't feel like we've cut ties completely. I don't feel like we're free falling. I feel like this was just our next adventure. So we ended up selling our house and all of our stuff and moving. We got on the plane. We're here. We got our visa, all that stuff. We have videos on all of that. So make sure you check those out if you're interested. So the big question, we're two months in. Is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> loving it. I can't imagine. It's it's funny because we don't like to commit to anything, um, but we committed to this. And now, like, I just can't imagine going back to the yeah. U.S. like right now. So I will say even in my hardest days here, I don't I don't want to move back. Um, I feel really excited about our opportunities here and our future here. And there's a lot that goes into that. So I kind of want to talk about the good side of us moving and some of the things that are harder to kind of help prepare other people in case it's helpful. Um, so some of the, I'll start with the bad and then we can end on the good. Um, so some of the things that are harder uh, is it feels a little lonely sometimes. Um, we have a lot of friends, but they are a lot mostly in the US. And so that means that I'm awake for a full six to eight hours before my friends and family are awake. And that's weird. Like frankly, that's, it's weird. It's hard. Um, and keeping in contact with people has been a little bit harder because to find time to FaceTime or whatever, it, there's, there's a narrow window. There is a narrow, there's a narrower window for when that works, especially if we want to talk during the week, because our friends in Austin, when they get off work at 5 PM, that's 11 o'clock our time. Is that right? five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. I'll, yeah, it's 11 o'clock. And making friends here, I mean, making friends in as an adult is always kind of tricky because you're used to bonding over like experiences or like interests. And we're in a pandemic. We're new to the country. We haven't kind of gotten in our flow yet. So we've been really lucky that other people have uh, reached out to us and, and we have started making some really good connections with people that we're really excited about. But we're looking forward to getting more in a groove and making more of a community here. And we hope that'll make it a little easier. Another hard thing is just culture shock, which um, some people think that culture shock means like you're shocked at something you've, you're you seeing in a new culture. But it's, it's anything that causes anxiety or um, uncomfort when you are in a new culture. So it's not like we're seeing anything wild here in Portugal that we're like, I can't believe they do it that way. No, it's just any, when you're in a new country, everything is just a little bit different. And when you compound that on a daily basis, like let's say you need to, you know, your first trip to the grocery store, the grocery stores here are normal grocery stores. There's nothing crazy about them, but everything is just a little bit different. So the way you go, you pay for your groceries, the, you know, the, exchange rate you know when you're looking at the prices mm -hmm. the brands it's just everything is just a little bit different the questions they ask you when you're checking out do you yeah. need a stack do you want to include your nif yeah and so it's not like anything's crazy here that we're seeing or that portugal is like so different from the u.s it's just everything is a little different and it just compiles yeah. to where any anything you do it you know just gives you a little bit of anxiety until you get used to it. I think for us, we definitely want to be respectful. We want to assimilate and we want other people to feel comfortable around us as well. So when there's a sense that we are making things harder for someone else because we don't understand what's expected, that causes me anxiety. And I want to, uh, I want to understand what's expected. And there's been a couple of times where frankly, like people have been frustrated with us and have yelled at us in Portuguese, which I didn't understand. Mostly um, like the older ladies, It's right? mostly uh, grandmas. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if that's a thing, but that's been my experience. And it's been like standing in line for things or like I took a picture of some flowers in a park and one of the ladies was very unhappy about that. I don't know why. Um, so it's, it's more so that I don't like the feeling that I am in, like that I'm being wrong. Like I feel discomfort because I'm, I'm just fumbling through my interactions in the day. Everything feels a little fumbly and that's hard. That's uncomfortable. And it's hard to not take that personally or to take that on as a, like, I am a fumbly person. It's just a hard experience. Yeah. So it's, it, I just want to make that clear. Is like you, um, if you go to a new country anywhere, there's just going to be these small little differences. Portugal is a, a normal country. It's 
Um, it's not too different from the U.S., but it's just a lot of little things that are different. And the last thing that's been hard is that finding your resources is harder. It took me like eight times longer than it normally would to find a new deodorant. And it feels sometimes <laughs> almost impossible because you have to wade through. There's different practices on the Internet. Many people here or many companies here don't have a digital first experience, unlike the U.S., which is super digital first. So f learning things online is difficult and being in person is difficult and shipping is different and store availability is different. And product availability is different. So everything is just a little bit different. And that makes you still feel like you're kind of fumbling through everything. And sometimes if you're not willing to push through it, it can feel a little impossible. Yeah. So that's really the bad of it, um, which, you know, really makes it sound really good already because that wasn't that bad. Um, but we, the, on the flip side, there's so many great things that we're enjoying here and we are so happy we made this decision. You know, we kind of have control of our day to day now. Uh, we can go to the beach whenever we want. In the middle know? of the week. We just went on a Monday. Yeah. Now that we're in Europe, we can quickly take a plane somewhere else. So we're about to go to Seville. Um, so it's just like really great to have control of our day to day. Um, and when we are working, we're working for ourselves. So we're investing in our own business to watch it grow and hope, you know, hopefully have it earning mm -hmm. more and more for us. And another great thing is just really small everyday things that make a difference. So like here in Portugal, there's a lot of parks, so we can just go walk around the park and take a deep breath. and. Um, yeah. yeah, we're just really enjoying the small day-to-day -day moments where every day is an adventure for us. Um, when we get out of the house, some days we just work all day. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's just been lots of little things adding up to really just, you know, make us, but make it like it is. So mm -hmm. to where, like, I just can't imagine it going back to yeah. how it used to be. Even during the hardest days, I think, okay, would I want to hop on a plane right now and, and move back? And the answer is not right now. I don't see that for us. Um, I see, you know, on social media and in the news that things are just really tense and difficult and anxiety producing right now in the world, but specifically in the U.S. And having the perspective here of ha feeling a little bit more control over our own lives, I don't feel quite so put upon by the world. I feel like I have a lot more control over what I'm doing. So I was listening to a seminar about how we have these narratives about ourselves that we think of as our truths. So like mom and dad always liked my brother better, or, uh, you know, I'm not the pretty one. I'm the funny one, or I'm not smart enough to do that thing or I can't do that thing. And those narratives, whether or not they're true, tend to shape how we live our lives. And one of the best ways that you can change that is to get outside of that narrative and do they recommended doing one thing a week that gets outside of that narrative that proves to yourself that you are not stuck in this hole that you might've made for yourself. And when I thought about that, I thought we're literally doing that every single day. Yeah. You know, I, there were a lot of things that I told myself about who I am and, and what I was capable of that I'm proving is not true every single day. And even though it is uncomfortable sometimes and stressful it's a really good stress and a really good discomfort and i am loving the growth and the opportunity and i'm really really glad we took this leap yeah and i feel like if you move abroad you're going to learn a lot about a new culture a new place but you're really going to learn more about yourself and be able to um make yourself better i hope yeah so we hope this kind of shows that moving abroad is possible and shows you a little bit about what it's truly like, some of the feelings that we've had moving here. But we hope that your takeaway is that it can be an exciting adventure, a good new start, a good refresh from kind of the same old, same old that you've been in, if that's something that you want. So we would love to hear from you guys about what else you're wondering about, about moving to Portugal, about being an expat in general, being self-employed, having a website, all of those types of things. So leave us a comment and we will talk to you later.